What's going on guys? Jax the Bearded Hiker here. That's right, beginner brisket from start to finish. Now I wanna reiterate, this is a beginner brisket, guys. This is gonna be no frills brisket making. We're gonna be using a basic rub. We're not getting fancy or anything like that. And I'm doing this video for all the people out there who are just getting into or are learning how to do briskets. And maybe you don't have a smoker, but most people have a gas grill. So that's how we're gonna be putting this together today or cooking it is going to be on a gas grill. Now, I've never done it on a gas grill before so this will be a first for me as well and I am by no means a professional at smoking or cooking briskets but I did consult who I believe are some professionals about this I contacted Troy over at T Roy cooks and also contacted Russ over at Smoky Ribs barbecue those guys know their stuff when it comes to brisket making and they gave me a tons of tips tricks and ideas and on how to go about putting this together so Without further ado, let's get started. So I just wanted to show you guys what my setup is gonna be here. You can see here, we got three burners here, plus we got another one right here. We're gonna be cooking indirect, so our brisket is gonna be going over on that side. I'm gonna set this pan in here right now just to help with some drippings and whatnot. Over here, this is gonna be some of our smoking wood here. I got it leaned up here against this little, where our flame's gonna be coming out, and so, that should catch on fire. I did some testing. It worked out perfectly. So that's gonna be our smoke. And we're gonna be setting this, cranking it up, and we're gonna set it on low and get it to temp. So as low as your grill can go, that's what we want, just using one burner. I'm also gonna fill this tube up right here with some pellets. This is about $10 on Amazon. I forget what it's called. I'll leave a link below if you want to pick one up but you can also make smoker boxes out of aluminum foil there's plenty of videos out there so we'll be placing those right there just like that we'll have our burner going and then our brisket Ugh. our brisket will be going here just like this and then about once an hour or so i will be probably flipping this the opposite direction and then maybe after the brisket uh, shrinks a little we might even be able to kind of do it like that this is a 17 and a half pound brisket by the way all right so let's trim this sucker up all right we're going to start trimming this sucker up and uh, we're just going to get some of these hard fat deposits off uh, like this big piece right here and i mean uh for all you uh, keyboard cooks out there, trust me, that says fats flavor, this right here is not gonna do much for you right here. I hadn't looked at the other side really yet, so I don't know how much hard fats on that side, but uh, we'll be back with you after we get all that. There's no really rhyme or reason really about trimming a brisket, I don't think. I mean, you just want this hard stuff here. I mean, this is this stuff right here is, it's hard and it's not going to render, so you want to remove that. Turn that big thing here. Square this thing up here. We're going to save these chunks too. This will be good to grind up for some stuff. thing in there all right you, you guys can see we got a pretty good layer of fat here we're going to try to trim this down pretty aggressively here you know keeping a little bit on you know maybe i don't know we might keep a quarter of an inch or so somewhere thereabouts on here but you can see all of this is hard so we just want to get rid of that for sure all right, so we got that top done there let's go ahead and flip this over because i want to show you something here okay so on a brisket, you got grain running in different directions, okay? Just so to help us out, you'll, one of the things that I learned from those guys is, you see how this grain is running this way, all right? So we want to mark the way that grain's go, going. So I'm just going to kind of cut this off right here, this little tip. That way we know we're going to be cutting in this direction when we go to uh, slice this brisket up. We're also going to be uh, separating the flat from the point, uh, too. We're going to make some burn-ins out of this point. Uh, hopefully, there will be enough light to 
shoot a video or something or at least add that into this video let's just go ahead and get rid of this tip here now again beginner brisket guys if you were in a competition or whatever you'd probably square this up and whatnot but this is just we're gonna leave it just like this okay so what we're gonna do is now obviously it's late in the afternoon all right and uh, I'm shot this video the day before just so we had enough light so what I'm gonna do is in the morning hold on I'm gonna talk to the camera all right so remember I'm not cooking this right now. I'm going to put it in my refrigerator because the lighting out here, if I start it, it's going to be dark. You won't be able to see. So tomorrow we're going to start this cook. I'm going to get up around 4 o'clock. I'm going to turn on my gas grill. I'm going to put it on its lowest setting. Mine only gets to about, the lowest it goes is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's with one burner on its low. So, But take yours as low as it can go, and if you can get that sucker to around 225 degrees Fahrenheit, awesome. And that's what I would cook it on. Okay, so we're going to take this inside. We're going to wrap it in saran wrap. We're not going to put any rub on it at all. In the morning, we'll take it out, unwrap it, and then we'll put in our rub. The basic rub is just going to be salt, it's going to be pepper, and it's going to be some tender quick. I'll leave a link, or not a link in the description, but I will leave the proportions in the description. It's basically going to be like a half a cup of salt, a half a cup of pepper, and about a quarter teaspoon of tender quick, also known as MSG. Don't freak out about the MSG. You're only using about a quarter of a teaspoon. All right, our grill is all ready to go for in the morning. All we gotta do is light it. I've went ahead and filled up my tube with some pellets and I'm using hickory and the Jack Daniels uh, bourbon, this stuff right here, the Jack Daniels. Um, you know, use whatever you want. Don't be afraid to mix and match uh, pellets if that's what you wanna do. Now, the reason why I'm actually putting the wood in there is because when you're smoking with pellets, there's sometimes less of a um, smoke flavor, uh, according to what uh, Troy told me. So I'm hoping to offset that whole situation with doing this and the acacia wood that I'm using. Acacia wood is kind of hard to find. Uh, you can get it at kudugrills.com. I know they'll send you a big sack of that. If you can't get your hands on that, you could use any uh, any other kind of wood that would you know that you want to use. And one of the things about the MSG or the Tender Quick, the reason why we're using that into our rub, it should help us get a smoke ring, or at least because when you use these pellets as well, sometimes your smoke ring is not as you know defined or maybe non-existent. So we're hoping that that. Uh, MSG or Tender Quick will help us develop a at least somewhat of a smoke ring. All right, so in the morning, the next thing you're going to see is it on the grill. All right, good morning, guys. We've been on here exactly one hour. We're about ready to uh, turn this 15 degrees here. Still can't do that, so we're just going to turn it 180. And I've got it fat side down. And I put a little bit of water in that water pan. All right, so we flip that brisket 180 degrees and we close that lid because we want to make sure we retain as much heat in there as possible. Now let's kind of just go over what we've done. First thing is notice on that brisket that I am doing it fat side down. I'm doing that because the heat is coming from that uh, right hand side from up underneath. So we want to try to protect that brisket as much as we can. So the first thing I did this morning as I woke up, I come down, I fired up my grill, I lit the pellet tube till it caught on fire. It caught on fire, it burned for about uh, 10 minutes and I came and I blew it out. Also did the same thing with that acacia wood. And you make sure if you're <clears throat> doing what I'm doing and putting a, like a piece of wood in there, make sure it doesn't, you know, once you get it smoking, just kind of move it off of the flame there. So after I got that going, uh, I pulled the brisket out of the refrigerator and I covered it pretty liberally with some Worcestershire sauce and we're just using that as a binder and then I went over with my rub which, which remember was the salt pepper and the MSG after we coated that liberally I came down put it fat side down closed the lid and we've been running at about 280 and also about every 30 or 45 minutes or so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna try to turn that or I'm gonna turn that brisket and I'm gonna keep turning it the 180 degrees until it shrinks enough until we can start doing it a quarter of a turn. One of the other things I want to tell you is about brisket selection. This is a prime brisket that I got from Costco. I highly recommend if you can pick up a prime cut 
make sure you do that. It's going to produce us a heck of a lot better brisket than it would, say, if we were using a choice or select. If you can get Wagyu, that would be even better. All right, we're going to give the brisket a little spritz here just to keep it moist on top so we don't dry it out too much. And this is just plain water. Also help our crust form. All right, so now that we've gave that a turn and we've spritzed it, let's talk about spritzing and or mopping. There's going to be arguments on both sides on whether you spritz or mop or whether you do either one at all. Now, I don't normally spritz personally. I believe when you open that lid, you know what they say, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Okay, so you can go by that. But we're spritzing now just because we're flipping it anyway so we're gonna you know i'm gonna have the lid open anyway so i'm spritzing it so again i believe that's your choice whether you want to spritz mop or do any of it at all all right just a little update guys this is what it's looking like uh let's see if we can get some light in here looking good we got a good crust on there or and uh the bark has set we probably could wrap it if we wanted to so we probably could wrap it right now. We're at 150. It actually just went to 150. I just probed it. We've been at around 148 for, I don't know, man, probably about an hour now. So I'm guessing that we're at, at the stall or whatever. So I'm going to let it go. I'm going to try to get it to 160 before I wrap it. But uh, I'll get back with you maybe. Uh, I don't know. I'll get back with you. Right now we are at seven hours and 10 minutes into this cook so it's definitely it hasn't went over 300 yet we've been rolling at about between 275 280 somewhere thereabouts um kind of surprised i actually thought we would have already reached uh 160 by now but i don't know it is what it is I'll get back with you later we're at 160 we're about ready to move this bad boy over here and wrap it wow wow wow, wow. So remember that water that I told you guys we put? So I only put a little bit of water, enough to cover the bottom, but you see all our drippings or whatever? So in, a lot of people will use beef broth, but again, we're going beginner, brisket, and simple. We're just gonna add, let's add a little bit on top too. All right, that should be enough. All right, that'll give us some moisture, and we're gonna go and seal this up really good. And then we're going to put it back on here until we get it tender. Now, normally a brisket be done around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 201 or something. But you can't, that's just a guideline. You basically are looking for when we probe it, is you want it to be no resistant in the point and the flat. So you can't always go by temperature. But again, 200, 201 is a good guide i mean but it could be 215 degrees before it gets tender we'll see all right let's put our brisket back in here close her down we see you when it's tender okay guys i all right so we got very little resistance here and when i've been doing the flat and we are at 205 206 all right, we're gonna go ahead and pull this a little hot. All right, we're gonna wrap this sucker up for a couple of hours, put it in our cooler here. Put it right in there, just like that. All right, we're gonna leave it in there two hours. So total cook time has been eight hours without, and then let's see, we did eight hours and then we it's been wrapped for three hours. So a total of 11 hours. It's a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. Okay, we'll see in a couple hours and we'll give it a cut into it. All right, so we've had this in the cooler for two hours. Should be good. We're gonna, a ton of juices in there too. Hang on a second. Um, all right, let me, uh, let's take it out of here and put it on the cutting board. All right, here we go. She's a jiggly. All right, so this is our point here. I'm just going to cut it in half right here first. Oh, wow. 
Nice, let's see. We got a little bit of a smoke ring. Look how juicy she is. Oh yeah. All right, let's, uh, all right, so we cut here. Remember we cut here. Now this point's probably gonna be a little, oh, she's juicy, look at that. Let's uh, cut in here to see how she looks. Let's take a piece, whoa, she's hot. Oh, look at that. All right, so let's do the pull test. Wow. All right, I'm happy with that. The smoke ring is not well defined. Good flavor, nice beefiness. Um, is it as good as you smoked one all day in your smoker? Mm, not. Not really, but this is pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with this. All right, management just got on to me for eating with my, uh, talking with my mouth full. So, would I do this again? Absolutely. Um, I would probably try it with some uh, different experimenting next time with maybe some different rubs and see if I get a different flavor profile. All right, guys. So, remember, let's recap what we did. We... Put it in there, we smoked it for about four hours, then just went straight with heat. Total cook time on that was uh, eight hours, and then we went with a three hour wrap. So that was 11 hours total, and then we uh, put it in the cooler for two hours. We got a perfectly cooked brisket. All right, tomorrow burn-ins, beginner brisket from start to finish, in your grill. Do it.